Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Player's Perspective, the interview series where I talk to those involved in geek culture and find out a bit about them. Standing there with me is a gentleman who currently works in the entertainment industry and has a passion for all things film. He is also one third of the YouTube show Hot Pepper Gaming, which is probably the first time peppers and game reviews have been mixed together. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vernon Shaw. Vernon, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. So, you have a BA in film and te- in television production from California State University, Northridge. So, that is quite a specific career route to go down. So, what first attracted you to that? Yeah, um, I had sort of, um, not from an early age, but I really got into film and television in high school. And um, it, it sort of happened in my first film class. Up until that point, I, th- I think I'd wanted to be a computer programmer, uh, and I was pretty mediocre at that at that age. Um, so I just started taking these film classes, and I really took to it uh, more than I had taken to any other subject I, I had ever taken. And it sort of blossomed from there. I decided that I wanted to go to film school. I applied to um, all of the the top film schools and was summarily rejected from all of them. And um, sort of, I I landed at Cal State Northridge and kept pursuing film from there and kept sort of pursuing a lifestyle in that. And I I guess I'm more or less happy to say that I'm, you know, I'm utilizing my degree and I'm, I'm, I'm in an industry of sorts that's related to my degree. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Awesome. So, You've uh, worked also as a projectionist yeah. and uh, several other um, positions at various different production uh, companies. So you've slowly worked your way up. It's clear that you've had a have a real passion for film. So have you ever considered anything else, or was um, something in the film industry always going to be your thing? Um, you know, th- there's times when I do consider something else. Um. Film made the most sense um, for me at the time and still continues to make a lot of sense. But what I'm noticing more and more as I sort of grow and mature in the industry or the entertainment industry as a whole is that um, it's not just about movies for me. It's not just about television for me. You sort of boil down the important aspects of it when you think about it. And the more I explore the genre, sorry, the more ex- the more I explore the format, the more I explore the um, the entertainment industry. I find that what really interests me is the idea of storytelling. So I don't I don't really want to limit myself to making movies or just making television, but to be able to craft stories in as many mediums as I can, I think is a noble goal and is something I really want to pursue. Yeah, I, I definitely think uh, you need to start off with the story or um, a good narrative because without that. You just either have a series of images, uh, which which can be sort of interesting from an impressionistic standpoint. But if you really want something cohesive, you need, you really do need to start with an idea or a good story that Absolutely. will like draw people in. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. As we mentioned, you know we have worked as a, as a, project, a projectionist. So were you working with more actual film stock or or, or sort of more sort of digital media oh no I, I wish i had been working with uh actual film stock actually uh the the college i was at we we spent a lot of time shooting on film and developing film and 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 you know using that as a medium doing digital intermediates and that was really awesome that was a that was a pretty cool experience and i feel like i'm one of the last generations to actually get to experience that um but for my projectionist job at cal state northridge i was just uh i was just a dude uh, being almost a TA in classes and, and, you know, doing digital projection and making sure that DVDs work. So it's not as glamorous as one would assume. There's actually a union of projectionists that um, the school would bring in whenever they had to show a 16 millimeter, or a 32 millimeter print. So I, I unfortunately didn't get to touch any of that. It definitely seems like um, n- nowadays with, uh, more more digital cameras than that. That uh, filmmaking becomes particularly it becomes easier to produce since it doesn't sort of cost as much with uh, having to buy the stock or 
or, or particularly cameras and that from its basic level if you just have a phone you can just turn it on and you can record something and, and put it into the computer and see what happens mm. uh yeah, it, that is true, and I think that's really an important thing. Um, going throughout college, I had, I had become sort of this curious about film and about the the beauty of like the chemically produced image rather than the digitally com- the digitally uh, produced image, and I was kind of a dick about that. And you know, moving moving onward in my career and learning more about the industry and learning more about the like mechanics of storytelling, like. I believe that it's really important to be able to tell a story no matter your your means. Um, film costs a lot, and and you know developing film and then editing film costs a lot, and and you know that's that's very limiting for someone who just wants to tell a story. And I think the advancements that we've had in in camera technology and digital technology and editing technology to the point where someone in middle school can can or or even elementary school geez let's not be limiting uh Mm. literally anyone can edit a video right now and that's an amazing thing for for you know the idea of storytelling now anyone can tell their story or any story and it's extraordinarily important and you know I, i i almost regret how i felt about film back then because now that we have digital um you know there there's it isn't limited to the rich or the the people of means and you know film has its merits and film is a very beautiful thing but i'm glad that there's a way for anyone to tell this story and i think that's i'm i'm getting i'm waxing way too much poetics about this but i think it's a really beautiful thing no no definitely uh, i think sort of the rise of, of of digital cameras has really opened up the industry in a way that's never been done before in a way that maybe 15, 20 years ago you couldn't have done unless you either had co- had connections or something or something or something of that ilk. Mm-hmm. So you, uh, so with the photochemical process versus digital, you, you definitely fall more fall more on the uh, digital side of things. Um, I I am more and more uh, partly because I owe a lot of my success to to. Uh, being able to shoot digitally. Um, I don't think half of the, the YouTube ideas I've had could, or any of the YouTube ideas I've had could have existed if I had to go through a photochemical process followed by a digital intermediate, followed by like a, I don't know, a DV tape to, to some other format to be uploaded to YouTube. The fact that I can shoot something and in that same day edit it and upload it to the internet is, uh, is an important thing to me, especially, um, I feel like I might touch upon this later, but, um, it's really important to me to be able to do something when you're excited about it. Um, I put a lot of value in really dumb ideas and I, I just, I really, really like just being able to have something that makes me chuckle and then to be able to enact upon that. And, you know, digital allows that and, and you know it really helps me uh sort of uh live that philosophy of of just like think of something dumb and then make it so you are also involved in the scare to care campaign which is an annual charity fundraiser marathon of horror games uh and that supports camp kesem which is a non-profit organization that sends children of cancer patients to summer camps and Last year in 2013, I think you raised over $21,000. So who came up with that idea initially? It was initially my older brother and I. Um, we had, um, well, to, to, to go all the way back to the beginning, my older brother, Tim, who is an awesome guy, he's uh, we're a year apart, so he's 26, I'm 25. My older brother, Tim, throughout college had been involved with a charity called Scare to Care. He had been a camp counselor. He had... He had worked on the stuff. He'd been on an advisory board to make sure that it, it, it works year to year. And leaving college, um, he had expressed like the interest in continuing to help out that charity. And I, I had always expressed an interest in like in, in wanting to help him out in that sense. Um, so we were kicking around ideas one day, and we we're really obsessed with this uh, this trend in Japan, um, the the Japanese Batsu game, um, which features uh, Japanese comedians, um, uh, being tortured for the sake of comedy. Um, 
so we sort of hatched this idea uh, about three or four years back of the um of you know like structuring a game around a horror video game and this and horror let's plays weren't the biggest at the time so i, I kind of take a little bit of pride in that that um that scared of care predates a lot of like the big horror gamers but we we developed this idea initially of I'm going to play Amnesia the Dark Descent, which is a renowned horror game, alone by myself, while my older brother and a, a team of scares tries to scare me during it for charity. The more you donate, the more I get scared. And then the second night, my older brother, Tim, does the exact same thing, but with me and a scare team doing that to him. Since then, the idea has evolved pretty significantly to the the point where it's just a horror video game marathon. So it's, you know, we're still keeping the idea of the more you donate, the more we scare the person playing, but we don't limit ourselves to one person playing. We have a bunch of people playing. We feature a lot of games. We, we have a 48 hour long live stream now. And it's grown, it's grown pretty exponentially in the beginning, uh, since the beginning. The first year we raised, I believe like 1000 some odd dollars. The second year was 2,500. And then the third year was, um, you know, with a lot of help from Polaris and a lot of Polaris talent, uh, we managed to raise $21,000 um, uh, uh, or a little bit north of that number. And it's a really humbling experience to see that, like, the hard work you put into something year after year actually pays off and is able to do real positive good. And, um, I, you know, you look back at it and you sort of take stock about what's important to you, what makes you feel fulfilled. And, being able to who help that many people is uh, is a really important thing to me, and it's something that I feel a lot of fulfillment out of in life. So, scared of care is 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 a great thing, and I hope to be doing it for years to come. And I hope to be collaborating with people and like featuring cool YouTubers, and you know, just keep making this a really big thing. And you know, it's just it's just really great. When you uh, first came up with the idea what did you have was there was there immediate support for it and people really wanted to get involved not specifically um back then i didn't really have the contacts in the gaming industry that i do now or i, I didn't really know a lot of youtubers or know a lot about the um community aspect of youtube um so it was really just me, my brother, and some friends going crazy with it with some support from the, the charity and some volunteers. Um, but it was sort of uh, really flying by the seat of our pants and not really understanding the economics or the, the industry of the Internet all that well. We managed to get featured on Reddit, and we got featured on a couple blogs. Uh, but that was it. But we still managed to get a pretty cool viewership and 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 – you know, uh, a lot of people really donated to the cause. And since then, it's been building. The more I learned about the Internet, the more I learned about um, the 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 culture of the social media platform, the more it's the more scared of care is becoming a thing. And, and it's something I, I am, yes, extremely proud of. Well, well, you have every right to be. And I often think there's something about horror games in particular um, where where. Um, particularly if they're done well, so say mm. games like uh, Alan Wake or, as you mentioned, Amnesia, where um, where where it's very much built on atmosphere and you're sort of, you're waiting for that for that person who's playing it to, to get that reaction. Mm. And I think, you know, if it's done in, in a, 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 a genuine way, then I think, you know, it definitely makes for compelling viewing. Yeah, I think about, I, sorry, I think a lot about how horror video games and, like, how the horror genre, like what it means to let's players and, and why it's such a popular genre amongst uh, gamers and people who watch games on YouTube. And I, I feel like I've distilled it to the point where it's, it's, I'm realizing that YouTubers and people watching internet media, they really value real human reactions and to have someone playing a scary video game and screaming and, you know, having a, a really good laugh out of, being scared or, or, or seeing a jump scare or, or seeing something scary in a video game. I think that, you know, that that's a really driving factor amongst the community. And, and, you know, I, I really hope to try to 
pull that into the charity idea and, and, you know, create real human reactions on a consistent basis for 48 hours for a live TV, a live internet audience. Yeah, I think last year I uh, donated to Scare to Care. And, um, oh, awesome. uh, and thank was... you so much for that. That's, that's really yeah. awesome of you. Yeah, and uh, at the time I think uh, Happy Lee Aaron, that's mm. uh, Aaron Sievers, as some may know her as, uh, I think she she was playing Amnesia and some and it was a case of watching people trying to um, prod her when she wasn't noticing just to get a reaction out of her while she was really um, getting in, in sucked into it. Oh yeah, I I, <laughs> I was probably asleep at that time. Um, <laughs> the big problem with uh, with Scared to Care is. Um, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how to run it correctly and how to delegate pow- uh, power or delegate uh, tasks. And I always end up finding myself staying up for 48 hours on end. So I think Happy Lyrian was the one moment where I got to sneak off and sleep on a uh, on a sleeping bag under a bean bag or something for for like three hours before I jump back into it. But yeah, it's. Um, I, I I remember specifically that that whole section was to like go back to the roots of scare to care and like have one person playing a game and people donate to scare her and I think that was I, I think that was a lot of fun for people. But you also have had a have, as I remember a number of uh, stretch goals. So if you oh, reach yeah. a certain amount, then you someone would would do something and um, that's why I always think is a good incentive to keep to keep the donations up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's um, the driving factor of Scared of Karen has always been like, you donate more money and we scare the person more. So we're trying to draw a direct link between, you know, donations to a charity and comedy for the viewer. Yeah, well, that's it's definitely a great thing to be involved with. And I wish you all the best for many hope, successful years to come. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. So, Vernon, you are involved in Hot Pepper Gaming, which you run both with Jared Rosen and Aaron Schmalfeld, which you also have occasionally presented by other YouTube stars, where you review video games while trying to combat the effect of spicy peppers. So, whereabouts did you come up with the idea for Hot Pepper Gaming? Yeah, um, originally it was me that who pitched the idea to Aaron, and then we eventually brought Jared in. Um, eating hot peppers and then doing things on the internet has always sort of existed. And, uh, you know, like I, I drew a lot of inspiration from, um, I guess two main sources like spicy, uh, spicy news was always a big inspiration where they, um, eat hot peppers and then try to, uh, read the news. And then I think specifically there was this series called gardening on salvia or whatever on salvia where um, a guy tried to like do something serious, but on salvia, and um, I feel like I, I I drew a lot of comedy from that. But um, it, it originally started as a tweet, like, "Hey, what if we did this?" And like three people favorited it. One person replied to it, and I was like, "Great, that's enough." So I I told Aaron, I was like, I was just like, "Hey, let's just do it this weekend." And she was like, "Sure, awesome, let's build a set." And we built a set for twenty dollars, and when when everything was built and everything was ready to, to sort of produce. Aaron said, you know, who would be really into this? Jared. And, um, Aaron and Jared had both gone to college together. So they know each other pretty well. Um, Jared, as you already know, is, um, he works in gaming and he's a games journalist and he's, uh, he's a pretty exuberant personality. So when, when this originally started, um, it was my idea to have written a script for this and then be trying to read a script to get through the entire, like just to try to get through an entire script of something. Well, after eating a hot pepper, Jared came in and he just outlined ideas and we noticed that it was a lot funnier to try to like make it from point to point than it was to read a pre-written script. Um, so once Jared did his, we were like, okay, yeah, that's exactly how we're going to do it from now on. Scripts are kind of lame. So the idea just kind of built together out of um, all of our stuff. And, you know, I owe a lot to Erin, actually, to backtrack a bit. I owe a lot to Erin um, as she's sort of like she, – she has a really strong mind for branding. And it was her idea to put it against a yellow backdrop. And it was, um, you know, a really important thing to creating, like, Hot Pepper Gaming, the channel – so now we have like 
sort of these like really brandable sorry i branding is on my mind all the time and it's like how do you brand a channel how do you make it recognizable how do you make it stand out uh amongst everything else and um jared sorry and Erin helped build the set, and she inspired the branding for that. So I owe, I owe a lot. I, I wanted to put it on a white backdrop, and my my ideas are always stupid. And I think the best ideas for Hot Pepper Gaming always come from people not listening to me. So yeah, like the three of us sort of collaborated on this, and like through through all of through our efforts, it became this like really big, really dumb thing, and I'm so proud of it. Well, it's, it's certainly gained a lot of traction, and um, I think recently uh, you've had both Aaron and Jared. They've been to both Montreal and now France. Unfortunately, I, so yes. yes. Um, I hadn't renewed my passport, and and um, Ubisoft, Ubisoft actually reached out to us and they were like, "Hey, let's fly you to Montreal. It'll be really fun for free, and we'll put you up in a hotel for free, and it's going to be great." And I couldn't go because. Um, my passport expired 10 years ago and I just hadn't been out of the country since. So uh, Aaron and Jared, when they had a blast and then I was like, great, this is my chance to, to get a, get a passport. I'm going to get on it. So I, you know, I started the process and all that stuff. One week later, we get reached out to visit France and I'm just like, I'm pulling my hair out at this point because I'd never been invited out of the country before, much less for free. And now here I am just like staring at two invites out of the country within the span of a week. So um, I I am, as many people in the fighting game community would say, a little bit salty. But yeah, um, Hot Paper Gaming has presented some extraordinary opportunities, um, opportunities I didn't even know existed. And I'm just, it, it just always makes me glad that, um, you know, like, we did this when we were excited about it. We 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 made this thing that we knew was kind of dumb, but it was also really funny, and we just kind of kept going with it. Yeah. So w- with these opportunities that you're beginning to get, and ho- hopefully more more will follow, do you, do you think um, these these companies uh, see you as uh, I'm doing this in quotes as uh, legit? <laughs> that if they if they're if they're, le- le- if they're willing to fly you out on their expense. Um. I don't know if legit is the term. Um, I I think everyone has a, an appreciation for dumb things, and everyone has an appreciation for things that make people laugh. And um, I think Hot Pepper Gaming is exactly that. Like I don't want to say that I've written the Citizen Kane of of YouTube, and I don't want people to think that I'm um, developing an ego uh, through hurting people. But um, I think there's there's something to be taken out of a video that makes you laugh. And I think that it's even more important when it's made with good intentions and it has a positive attitude and I know that hot pepper gaming is a little it's a little ridiculous and it's a little like I don't know painful or it's a little it's strange in that fact but you know the the intentions are always positive like we make sure that that we're not being, um, for lack of a better word, shitty people. And we're making people laugh because of it. And I I just, I, I think there's a lot of value in that. And I hope a lot of these gaming companies see that within us. And I'm glad that some have, and some have, have sort of really taken to that so I, I'm really glad for the opportunities that have present, been presented to us since, and um, I hope that we can see more. And you know, I, I, I'm just I'm I'm really glad that AAA companies see this dumb YouTube channel, have a laugh, and then want to try it themselves. I think that's just a, a, an amazing. Um, it's it's one of those like only on the internet moments where this this is the first time, not the first time, but like this is just something. Um, and it's just something really cool where where a big company can can see like these little guys doing this dumb thing and then want in on it. I'm surprised you still have taste buds left with all the amount of hot peppers you've you've digested. Oh yeah, I, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a it's not terrible actually. Um, there's actually positive health benefits to habaneros, which I actually just learned this week, and I've done a lot of research on spicy food since this channel started and. It's actually given me a really big appreciation for spicy foods. 
Um, I guess I was just I was really a, a medium salsa kind of guy when this started, but uh, now I'm a full proponent of the idea that food should be felt. And um, I don't know, spicy food is just great. I, I love it now. So I, I don't think taste buds have died. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I know for myself that I've got I I basically have almost no tolerance towards spice. So if I have something spicy like curry or ch- chili con carne, then it basically it's 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 sort of curry in name only. It's just the mildest form because. It's, uh, it just it really really bothers me. Look, man, my recommendation: start working on that tolerance. You're gonna you're gonna find a, a new beautiful world of spicy things to eat. It is so lovely. Well, I'll, it will have to be something I I try out. So, you no, know, we we mentioned about about um, you getting opportunities to to go in, international. So, do you think Hot Pepper Gaming will invade the UK at some point? Oh, we actually have already. Um, the first, oh, right. Yeah, the first uh, hot pepper fire sale, which was um, sort of an idea that, again, came from people not listening to me. Um, we were reached out to by the Rome Total War. Sorry, the the Total War Rome, too. There's a lot of colons. And, and Is that Creative numerals. Assembly? Yeah, Creative Assembly. Yeah. There were a lot of uh, numerals and colons in that name, but... Um, they reached out to us and they're like, man, we love your idea. We should do that over here. And uh, initially I was like, nah, I don't know. That's kind of like, I don't know how we're going to get this going. And like, we're, we're already on this weekly release schedule. So like, I don't know how we're going to fit it in. Um, but it eventually came to the point where um, Jared met one of the creative assembly guys, Will, actually the guy who ate the hot pepper, uh, met him at um, the Penny Arcade Expo. I believe it was uh, Prime up in Seattle. And they all had a laugh, and they all had a good time. And um, uh, from that, we worked out something where um, the uh, Total War guys would film it in the UK, and I would direct over Skype, and it just it turned out really well. So we were like, well, let's just keep doing this. So we sort of used that as an avenue to like to give um, uh, big gaming big gaming companies a voice to pitch their videos to. Um, to our audience at a price of eating a hot pepper. Well, if you sort of ever sort of come here in the, in, in, in the person, then I'd definitely like to know about it. Thanks, man. Um, I would, I, it's always, I, I know you're in the United Kingdom right now, but it's always been my dream to visit the UK. So hopefully I can, I, I know it's one of those grass is always greener. I'm sure you want to like check out Los Angeles and see all the movie stars. I thought, and... I thought, I've already been to LA. Oh so, yeah. It's miserable. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you visit? I I I went to um, Santa Monica. Oh yeah, awesome! Like, I'm I'm glad you got to see Los Angeles. It's uh, I don't know. I, I make fun of it a lot, but I I really do appreciate living here. I would still like to visit the UK, so we'll keep that on the bucket list. Yeah, you you work on that, and you let me know, and I'll take you around places. Absolutely, man. Thanks a bunch. Obviously, you really want hot pepper gaming to 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 grow and grow. Um, where where do you think it where do you think it could be in the future? Wow. Um, I think you know being in YouTube uh, and and sort of examining how YouTube works, you notice that like the 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 things that succeed and the things that exist in, in perpetuity are always the things that are. It's always the things that are small, uh, funny, but repeatable. So something you can do over and over and over again. And and we really went into Hot Pepper Gaming with that in mind, trying to like find a, a small, you know, focused, repeatable idea. And I'm glad to have seen it grown this far in such a short amount of time. And I hope it keeps growing as we continue working on it. Obviously, uh, myself and the people who work on Hot Pepper Gaming don't want to be known as the people who torture other people for the rest of our lives. So we're definitely exploring different avenues uh, into how we can exist online and how we can create shareable formats online. So Hot Pepper Gaming isn't the only thing that we want to do, and we want to keep working on things and uh, keep keep challenging ourselves creatively to think above shareable ideas and you know we're we're probably going to be starting other channels if we can find the time and probably going to be 
creating as much as we can. But yeah, Hop Ever Gaming has opened so many doors for us and helped us to meet so many amazing people. I mean, I'm currently talking to a guy in the United Kingdom right now. It's like it's it's 11 o'clock here. It must be 7 a.m. over there. It's getting yeah, it's get it's about five to seven. Yeah, yeah so. the sun's coming out, uh, and I don't think I would have been able to experience that if I if if you know we all didn't enact upon this really dumb idea. And I think that's a great thing. I think that's just awesome. So it's really an incentive to create and to keep, you know, exploring the boundaries of creativity. And hopefully I can create more like more storytelling based stuff or more, more not hurting people stuff. But that's something that that's uh, in the near future, but it's not here yet. But so the, the goal is to just keep creating and keep pushing myself and keep, um, keep enacting upon dumb ideas and hopefully see where that brings me. Awesome. So, Vernon, I'm going to ask you a question now that I ask everyone who, who comes on here, and that is, if a video game developer were to come up to you and say, Vernon, you can create whatever game you would like, what would it be and why? Um, I was actually thinking about this a lot earlier on, um, I think yesterday. Um, I was uh, When I was a little kid, uh, I was really obsessed with Final Fantasy VII, like I'm sure most other people my age were. Um, and I was like, man, I love RPGs but I want to make them more action oriented. So like I had this, like I was, I was young and I had this idea in my head. It was like, Oh, this action oriented RPG and like things are RPG based. And, um, uh, like I had all these ideas for battles and random encounters thought out. And then I just realized that that was just tales of symphonia and it had already been made. And I'm glad to see that there's a big trend in, in putting RPG elements into action. Um, so, dreams of a game developer of becoming a, a game developer are a little bit crushed right now, but um, I'm taking, I'm taking a bigger uh, interest and I, I, I have a lot of love for like the telltale sort of games, this storytelling adventure based games that are really coming back right now. And I think above all else in, you know, like you, you appreciate all aspects of gaming, but above all else, I appreciate a good story and, and a compelling a compelling story and compelling characters. And I want to see that so much more in gaming. So if someone were to approach me for that, I would pitch them some story-based, character-based idea that is completely inaccessible to everybody that's just about, like, creating good stories and stuff. I think that would be my um, my terrible game. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Final Fantasy VII, and I think one of the key um, aspects of that of that game is the use of uh, music and mm -hmm. each character has their own specific theme and i think uh with obviously the technical limitations of the playstation that you know even without voice acting you know you can tell a story just through the music and you, you know and you know what's going on mm -hmm. couldn't agree more so uh, vernon uh what do you have to say to um all the people who have followed you specifically on, or on Hot Pepper Gaming, what do you have to say to all, all the fans who have been watching you? Um, I guess that's a big thank you. Uh, thank you for enjoying the little things or enjoying the dumb things or, or you know, being okay with something being so, so, you know. Um, I, I really can't think of a different word than dumb. But thank you so much for, you know, appreciating something as small as hot pepper gaming and, and, and an idea as simple as just eating hot peppers and then trying to review video games. I know it's not the most complicated thing, but I'm really glad it's made this many people laugh. And just imagining, you know, like that amount of subscribers just in one room is is a, is a pretty uh, complex thing to think about. And I'm just so glad that you know, I'm not a crazy person and the ideas I've been like thinking of and they get the idea, the ideas I've been working on with friends um, are actually, um, you know, they have merit and they're a shareable thing and, and there's something on the internet that people want to watch. So I'm, I'm extremely proud of all of, of you know, all these fans who have congregated around this and I'm, I'm extremely thankful for this. And I know not everybody gets to experience that. So just, Thank you. Yeah, you never know, really know what ideas are going to take off.
so it's it's definitely you know a certain amount of luck is involved but you know you clearly had a game plan and you know you stuck to it yeah absolutely it, it happened a lot a lot quicker than i thought it would um the original goal for the three of us was you know to film a bunch of these hot pepper game reviews to have a library going and to to keep posting it and maybe eventually something would break on reddit or something would be seen by um a blog but it thankfully happened on the first episode and and we found ourselves like having to deal with a fan base and deal with the deal with viewership from the onset of the idea and it has been a hard thing to keep up with and and you know just making sure that we're growing with our fan base has been tough but I'm really glad that it took on so quickly you know it was a big luck thing I think that there was a lot of luck involved in becoming uh, so big so quickly but I'm very I'm very grateful for it that's yes that's fantastic Vernon so uh, whereabouts can we find you on the internet Vernon oh you can find uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel uh, youtube.com slash hot pepper gaming my personal Twitter is at Vernon Shaw and I actually recently started Tumblr, which I have no idea how to use, which is vernafterreading.tumblr.com. Awesome. So, Vernon, it's been really great talking to you today, man. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Patrick. This was a lot of fun.